Why are you pouring water over your head? I hope that if I pour water over my head, it will help me to think of a story. <laughs> oh. This is Frog and Toad Together, a movie about these two friends' adventures. Sometimes their escapades are mundane, like swimming in a lake or looking for a lost button. And other times they're dangerous, like climbing up a mountain filled with snakes, hawks, spiders, steep cliffs, and avalanches. I'm not afraid. Uh, I'm not either. I'm, I'm, no, no, no. But no matter where their journey might take them, these two guys will do anything in their power to make each other happy whenever the other one is feeling down. I love the loyalty these two pals have, and also their personalities. Frog's happy nature is contagious, while Toad's depressed nature is endearing to watch. And kind of funny. Frog, why do you keep looking out of the window? <sighs> because now I'm waiting for the mail. But there will not be any. Oh, yes there will, because I've sent you a letter. <gasps> I also like the movie set pieces doing a good job in replicating the style of the book it's based on. They're well crafted and fit well for a kid's movie. Don't get me started on the animation, it's so lively that you sometimes forget these amphibians are puppets in the first place. I mean, just look at the expressions on these character faces. Now, I know what you're thinking. Man, how does it get any better than this? Huh, I don't know, maybe have a well-orchestrated piano solo from none other than Toad himself? Yeah, that would pretty much do it. This movie was produced by Churchill Films, and it's one of their many specials that perfectly captured the essence of kids' books. Filled to the brim with fantastical backdrops, charming character designs, and great musical numbers to boot. All thanks to this one guy named John Clark Matthews, his family, and his team of animators. Before we get into the movies produced by Churchill Films, let's take a look at the man that had a hand, both literally and figuratively, on these projects. John Clark Matthew was born in Pasadena, California. He was considered the class artist in his school years, but he didn't pursue it until his second year of college. His first major was actually in architecture, where he spent the majority of time sleeping at the drafting table. Hey, can you blame the guy? I mean, how boring is architecting? You create boxes within boxes within more boxes. Oof. Finding architecting boring, Clark Matthews did what any college student would do, which is simply moving on to something else, this time working on his music and film major. It's here he learned how to animate and was inspired by Oscar Finisher's works. Mr. Finisher is pretty much the granddad of visual music. Being the one who designed the opening scene of Fantasia before he quit due to creative differences with Walt Disney. We'll see towards the end of the video how Mr. Matthews' love for music will go on to shape some of his projects. In the mid-70s, Clark Matthews became a puppeteer with his wife, Nikki Matthews, doing gigs for both schools and parties. Mr. Matthews later found puppetry to be hard work. Not only did he have to move heavy equipment around, but also deal with hostile children. Stating in his bio, Kids let you know when they don't dig your act, especially after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He's right, you know. Kids haven't learned yet to fake a smile, so they'll be completely deadpan if they don't find you entertaining, slowly judging you and thinking you're a lunatic or something. To him, stop motion seemed like a better job, since he didn't have to deal with any rude customers or lug heavy equipment around. So in 1980, he started working for Churchill Films by producing, directing, writing, composing, and animating films based on kids' books for them. Of course, he didn't do it alone. He had other animators by his side, like Joe Fletcher and Justin Kahn. These two guys will later go on to help animate The Nightmare Before Christmas, believe it or not. Clark Matthews also got help from his family, working on some projects from their own home, which is pretty cool, 
Sounds like a fun bonding experience to me. His four sons, when not in school, very much a part of the creativity, and Nathan sees it in his future. I probably will end up doing something like this. Maybe not exactly the same. Something similar. During his time working for Churchill, Mr. Matthews won five Emmy nominations, a George Foster Peabody Medal, and a Carnegie Medal as well. He has a very impressive portfolio, to say the least. Now let's dive into these films he worked on to see if they're any good. Spoiler alert, they're all pretty fantastic. If I guess right, can I turn the TV back on? <sighs> no, you should go outside and play, get some fresh air, do something, anything but sit around here watching TV all day. Uh... Ralph, are you listening? What did I just say? Beats me. Weren't you listening either? Here's a rotten cat named Ralph that causes mayhem for both his owners and others. He has two specials, which means double the destruction. Every time this cat's on screen, you know something is about to go down. Sometimes it's innocent, like setting up a whoopee cushion, and other times it's downright evil, like making one of his owners take a nasty fall. This cat is insane, and so are the backgrounds and props. They look like they were made by a kid, which is a good thing because it blends well with Ralph's hyper nature. Oh hi! I was a. I don't believe it. Look at this mess. Ralph. Oh, you're in trouble again. But some roaches were making a mess. Ralph is bad to the bone but his owners still love him for who he is and wouldn't have him any other way. All I want to know is, have you seen this cat? Is this cat sweet, kind, and gentle? No, he's absolutely rotten, but I love him anyway. I too have fallen in love with this little demon. He's like a gremlin, if they had somewhat of a conscience. Psychotic, but somewhat reasonable. <laughs> now let's talk about another Ralph, that's a mouse. Ralph and the Motorcycle are a trilogy of films about a cool rodent doing sweet motorcycle tricks. How does a mouse drive a motorcycle, you might be asking. Easy, the same way you drive any vehicle, by making the sound effects for it. Duh. Is that what you mean? Yeah. All three films have impressive stop motion effects that are both imaginative and creative. They also consist of dramatic scenes that show the dangerous life of a mouse, making for some bone-chilling moments, like this one right here. <laughs> What's wrong, mouse? Cat got your tongue? <laughs> yep, uh, that's creepy all right. I wish the entire trilogy just focused on Ralph, but, unfortunately, we do have other characters that take up the spotlight. <sighs> They're all snooze fest and bring the movies to a screeching halt. Come on, Keith! Ping pong! I hope you let me win at least one. Oh, we'll see about that, Dad. Alright, alright, alright. Do yourself a favor and just fast forward to the scenes with Ralph. You'll thank me later. Hey Doc, does this sound familiar? Rumors have reached me that this will be the most important mission in a millennium. But rumors have reached me. We're on the way up. Well, that's what you said before the last mission. And the last one, and the last one, and the last one. And Thank you. <laughs> right. Thank you, Doc. Commander Toad in Space stars Captain Toad, the leader of the group, that has an ego as big as his thirst for adventure. Doc Peppers, the cranky old scientist, S.S. Stella, the sassy spaceship, Lieutenant Lully, the cool-headed second-in-command, and Jack, the human boy. 
This movie is about the space explorers getting their first real mission. Their voyage is tough, but thanks to Toad's leadership and the crew's skills, they're able to push through and succeed. Now, what makes this special so special? Well, this movie has some of the best dry humor of the entire galaxy. That would fit greatly in a Friday night sitcom. Yes! Whoa. All right, I'm excited too. At last, a real mission. Oh, Jimmy Five! What do you want, money? If the Algean Council thinks they can get away with this insult, they are sadly mistaken. <laughs> That's how we growl on Rodentia. The jokes are pretty funny, but if humor isn't your style, this show also provides some sci-fi drama. That's enough to be engaging, but not too serious. The only problem with this special is that there's not more of it. I would have loved this to be turned into a series. I mean, can you imagine this airing right next to dinosaurs? Ugh, that would be a match made in heaven. Speaking of dinosaurs, that brings us to our next topic on our list. Yeah. Here you go. Oh, and here's one for you too. <laughs> Pretty good, aren't they? This is Stanley, a bright young caveman that questions everything. Trying to break free from the status quo by figuring out new ways to make his life and others better. The top cavemen don't like his way of thinking, so they decide to kick Stanley out of the pack. Lucky for him, some dinosaurs are able to help Stanley out and build a new home for him. Why rainbows fade? Why rainbows fade? Why babies yell? Why babies yell? When we don't bathe? When we don't bathe? Why do we smell? Why do we smell? And when we wake up, where do our dreams go? Is it all a dream or simply seem so? The other cavemen then see Stanley's new home and see that maybe following tradition isn't always the best option. So they apologize to Stanley and join him on his journey for a brighter future. The world smiles and is gentle. The world smiles and is gentle. Use your mind and you will see. Use your mind and you will see. The special is well paced and its songs are pretty catchy. It also has a simplistic style to it that's easy on the eyes. I also like Stanley's character. He's a kind nature spirit that always helps others no matter how many times they've wronged him in the past. This special is basically the crudes in a more condensed form. So, if you like that movie, then you should give this one a go. Yeah, that sounds real tasty. Just make sure you watch it with an open mind, or you'll end up like these chumps right here. Uncle Elephant is a short film about a young elephant named Ernie, being forced to live with his uncle after he loses his parents in a boating accident. Ernie is devastated by his parents' disappearance, and slowly grows angry at the world for his misfortune. He's only able to loosen up when his uncle does everything in his power to make him smile, showing the young calf the importance of laughter and forming new connections with others. The story does an excellent job in explaining loss of a loved one to a younger audience without talking down to them or holding any punches. <sighs> well, sleep tight, Arnie. Hey, Uncle. Hmm? You think my mom and dad are ever going to come back? Yeah. Well, um, I can't lie to you, Arnie. I just don't know. But somehow I think everything's going to be all right. Keep your trunk up, Arnie. That's what I always say. <laughs> Good night. Mom, Dad, I don't know where you are, but I just want you to know I miss you a whole lot. Good night, Mom. Good night, Dad. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty bleak. But for those that watch this film, you probably are well aware of the elephant in the room. 
and why this story kind of backs pedal on its message. <laughs> Arnie! Arnie! Good news! What? What is it? What? Your parents have been found. What? Yes, they're alive and well. Really? They're on their way home. Oh, Whoopi! Yeah! Yep, even though the film is about moving on, it doesn't go all the way since it brings the parents back from the dead. Now, some of you guys probably think this is cop-out to avoid death in a children's story, but I personally think it straightens the message even further. You see, Ernie is happy that his parents are alive, but the uncle is stricken with grief since he now has to give up his one and only friend. Hey, what's the matter, uncle? <laughs> I'm feeling a little sad, I guess. That's all. Aren't you happy mom and dad are coming home? Oh, well, of course I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I was, I don't know, I guess I was just kind of getting used to you being around and all. Hey, you're not going to get rid of me that easy. I'm going to come visit you. Hmm. Arnie, isn't it strange how something happy can make you sad? Yeah, and something really sad can end up making you happy. This one scene does a good job of showing kids the good and bad and everything. That even when you lose something, you can be happy, and even when you're happy, you can be sad. I really love this special for its take on a dark subject matter. It's a film you should definitely check out if you want something to pull on your heartstrings. of statistics. What? Get the hell out of here. <clears throat> now that's why some animals eat their young. The Churchill films are pretty tame for the most part. Nothing in them is truly terrifying. But lucky for us, if you want to look at something truly otherworldly, look no further than the pilot shorts John Clark Matthews created. This is Papa No Good, a dark comedy that screams nihilism. It was a pilot created for the now defunct editing software the Sony Screen Blast. The show is about Papa No Good and his assistant, Wusher, trying to entertain the masses so they don't get deleted. Don't listen to him. He's an old grouch. If we don't get at least 20 letters per show, we're canceled. Like deleted? So what's the use? The jokes in this pilot are well written, and the short does a good job invoking existential dread in an interesting way. You're young now, but time always by. There's no escape. We're all going to die. Let that funk remind every day not to piss your life away. I'm not okay. You're not okay. And that's okay. John Clark Matthews was extremely hands-on with this project. Not only did he write, direct, and compose music for it, but he also mocap and voiced Papa No Good himself. You can tell from this behind-the-scene footage that Mr. Matthew really put in a lot of time and effort to make this short the best it can be. Where motion capture is a performance art, and what you get is what you get. As it is, I did it in this little corner here, you know? Music and, and animation and, and a mouse, and there you are. I can do all, all the things that a big studio and a whole team would do. Papa No Good is simply captivating to watch, just like his other short, Drapa. It follows the same weirdness of Papa No Good that really exemplifies how new and experimental CG truly was back in the day. John Clark Matthews has a fascinating, but kind of bizarre, artistic vision. You can see it in the Churchill films, but also his music and sculpting. Speaking of music, Clark Matthews is currently writing songs in his small mountain studio. You can find his album, Dream of Flying and Dying, as well as his webpage in the links down below. I listened to most of the songs in this album and yeah they also have a nihilistic tone to them and they're pretty good i also have the links to his other works in case you want to take a look john clark matthews like many artists is a guy that needs more recognition but what do you guys think about john clark matthews do you think his work is any good leave your thoughts down in the comment section down below thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye